So here we are again, and we're going to talk about cannonballs and shells and wood fuses. Specifically, how to get the wood fuse out of a shell if you want to save the fuse, which I recommend because they're really cool. But first, let me say this. You must do this with a shell that's already been rendered inert. Okay, and what I mean by that is when you find your cannonball or your shell, you have to take it to someone who will drill it out and get all the powder out of it for you. Now when I say drill it, I mean by a remote rig. It is not a guy standing over it drilling it by hand. This is done with a machine or a setup that this guy will, will create so that he can drill it from a distance. And typically the cannonball or shell will be underwater when this is done. Now this is important. When you take your shell to him or your cannonball, if it has a wood fuse, ask him to drill the hole directly through the center of the wood fuse or somewhere else on the shell. Because he'll drill it typically anywhere you want it to be drilled. Now if it's not a wood fuse, I would recommend not letting him drill it through the fuse because it just makes it really ugly and it takes a lot of the value away from it. So, back to the wood. Once you get your cannonball or shell back from this guy who has done this for you, you'll have a shell like this. It won't be clean because typically they don't clean them. Uh, some people do. They'll do that for you for an extra fee. But you'll have a shell like this with a wood fuse that will be stuck inside. You will not be able to pull it out. It'll be like glued to the sides of the shell because it's all swelled up because it's wet. What I'm going to show you now is how to get this fuse out of here in one piece so that you can preserve it. Let's get to it. And when you get your shell back from this guy, you know, there'll be a hole drilled through here, but down inside this will all be flushed out. There'll be no powder in there. What they do is they take a high pressure water system and they thread it down through the hole inside and they let it run and they wiggle things around and all the powder comes out so it'll be completely empty inside except that it'll be wet the fuse will be wet and it'll be all swelled up and it'll be as tight as can be wedged in there so this is how you do it you're going to take your shell which will have the fuse in it just like this except it'll be pushed down in more and there'll be a lot of corrosion all around the lip right here and you're going to want to clean this very carefully so you don't chip anything but you want to make sure that there's not any buildup around the edge Again, there will be a hole right through the center of the fuse here. Now I have filled this back in just so it doesn't look so bad and also to uh, help hold the fuse together a little bit. So you're going to have this thing cleaned up. You're going to put it in front of a heat lamp just like this. If you don't have a heat lamp, you can use just a regular incandescent light bulb on a lamp and just lay it over on its side. That will work too. But you have to be careful because this gets hot, a light bulb gets hot, and you don't want to have it too close but you don't want to have it too far away. You want this to get nice and warm and you don't want to burn or catch on fire whatever you have it set on. So do not set it on a pool table, do not set it on a tablecloth like I have here. Set it on the basement floor or the garage floor or something like that. So you have to let it sit in front of the light for a couple days or three days or four days or however long it takes. What you'll see is you'll see little cracks developing along the edge here where the wood is starting to shrink. Now it won't shrink uniformly all the way around because some of this will be adhered to the side like it's been glued in there. So you want to take a knife like this. This is just a little paring knife or something like that. You're going to want to work it down in that crack and just kind of slowly work around, work around, work around. Get it further down in there, further down in there. Now you might not be able to do this the first time. You may have to put it back on and cook it some more. That's not a problem. It just takes more time. So after you get this thing worked down a bunch, you might be able to wiggle it with your thumb like this. You probably are not going to be able to grab it and pull it out because again, it's wedged down in there tight. You may take a pair of needle nose pliers like this with a nice sharp point and you might be able to grab enough of it and pull it out. Okay, sometimes you can do that and that's easy if you can, but most often you can't do that because again, it's, the wood will be flush with the shell right here and you, it's nothing to grab a hold of. So what I do is I make a tool. This is just a little file that I have and I bent over uh, the end of it to make a hook and you can use other things. I think crochet needles might work too. Someone recommended that in an earlier video. Then what you do is you take the hook and you put it down into the hole that will be in here. And go down into the shell and you, feel, and you pull it back up and you can feel around until it hits the bottom of the fuse right there. 
and you might be able to just pull it right out of there. And it might take a few times, but eventually you'll get it out and it will be in one piece. Then you'll have to preserve it. That's a different process. So do not drill these things at home. Have a professional do it for you. Okay?